Police in New York say somebody delivered 35 pounds of cocaine to the United Nations last week. Now they're trying to figure out who sent it. According to officials, the package came from somewhere in Mexico. They say the coke was stashed inside these two white bags made to look like diplomatic pouches. We're told the real ones are blue, so security officials at the UN immediately knew these were fakes. The head of the security at the United Nations says somebody probably used the logo in order to bypass inspection at the U.S.-Mexico border, but never intended for the package to actually be delivered to the United Nations. With us now is the former acting commissioner of U.S. Border and Protect Protection, Jay Ahern. He spent 33 years working in customs and currently principal for the, for the Chertoff Group in Washington, D.C. First of all, who sends pounds of coke to the U.N.? What kind of fool does that? Well, Shep, I think what we have here is an obvious error. Yeah. Uh, this, this was to be shipped to the United States, and, and my guess, basing on some of the public information I've seen from the New York City Police Department as well as from the U.N. security folks, this did not cross the border uh, physically across the land border. It most likely came in by air through the DHL courier hub in Cincinnati, and then ultimately to be delivered in to New York City and the U.N., and absent having good shipment in, uh, information about who's sending it and who's supposed to go to, there is something in the drug conspiracy world called an internal conspiracy. And my, my judgment is this was never supposed to get to the U.N. I guess to figure out who was supposed to get this and who may have sent it, you just have to follow the transportation train chain. Well, that, that's true. I mean, it certainly is a supply chain security vulnerability. And again, my assessment is this was to be stolen somewhere along the way by perhaps an internal conspirator working for one of the transportation modes going forward. But, but clearly trying to make it look like a diplomatic shipment or an official shipment going to the U.N., which obviously it seems like they did a pretty lousy job on, somebody missed their handoff and someone's going to be accountable for that. I wonder if we've learned something bigger here, though, at least potentially, Jay, and that is are people now using diplomatic routes to send things to and from? Well, I tell you, as you said, Shep, I was in law enforcement for over 33 years before I retired two years ago. And oftentimes, fake shipments that were supposed to be going to embassies or appear to be diplomatic shipments to try to bypass border inspections is one of the tactics that's been used over past. So this is not a new, this is not new, but this is something that clearly has, has been uh, used over time. It sounds to me like you've seen it all. I mean, the story about the dog is incredible. Yeah. Uh, that was actually in New York going back several years ago. The dog actually was nicknamed Koki, and we adopted it and put it out at our canine training facility after smugglers tried to go ahead and conceal packments just below the surface of the skin. Below the surface of the skin? What did it do That's to that right. dog? Well, they, they emaciated the dog, starved it before they actually go ahead and concealed the packets oh. so it would make it look like a normal dog. But clearly, uh, our, our inspections at the border were able to find something like that. But certainly, over the years, with all the different smuggling techniques, uh, smugglers and drug organizations are only limited by their own imagination. We've seen quite a few things over the years. Wow. Before we go, that dog survived, right? Yes. Yes, he did. All Surgery right. and again was adopted by the agency. That's great. All right, Jay Ahern, man. Thanks for the insight. All right, thanks. If, if you decide to send Coke, don't send it to the UN. I mean, they'll probably catch it. I mean, that's just dumb.